doing a property video of an empty house can be really rather boring, but I'm gonna show you in this episode how to add virtual staging and also some realistic animation so that you can provide something with a higher media impact to your clients than just shooting this empty property by itself. Ready to see how this is done? Let's get started. So starting off here in Premiere Pro, you can see I've added a clip to the timeline, and this was of me just walking in and doing a pan. It's really rather boring. Now I could take a virtually staged image and I could put that also in the timeline. And if I did some standard animation, I can zoom in on it, but that's lacking some of the features because I also want to do some panning. Just zooming in, it's okay, but it really lacks that realism factor. It just looks like we're just adding just a picture to it. So instead, what we can do is add some better realistic animation. You can see what's happening here on this clip. I am zooming, I am panning if I bring the, the uh, playhead back and forth, but you can see that there's also some geometric panning that's going on here. Now, the key to this is that to have this work, we need to do something more than just zooming and moving the picture around. We need to actually have geometric control. For instance, if we were in Lightroom Classic, I could take an image and I could use like the horizontal adjustment and I could then change some of its geometry and I can pan back and forth on it. But there really isn't an option to do that in Premiere Pro, especially if you wanted to animate it. So what we need to do in Premiere Pro is to control that type of animation. So just to cover some of the basics though, to back up here real quick, this was originally, just like with the video, this was just a picture, an ambient shot of this area. Now, when I did the flambient technique, which you've probably seen me talk about in other videos, I teach in my online course on pro interior photography, that's when I get this image and then I can virtually stage it and add all this to it. And then I can add this into Premiere Pro. And that's what I've done here. I've added this into Premiere Pro, it's in my project. And by the way, if any of this so far, you're not sure about it, you'd like to learn more, I do have some online courses to learn not just videography for real estate, but also how to do pro interior photography, expert editing, and also exterior photography, and business and marketing for real estate photography as well. I have links to that and more information down in the description for this video. But let's go back here to where we need to do something more than just the standard animation on this image. For instance, on this image where before we had any geometric control on it, if we take a look under the effects controls, we can see that I animated some of the scaling so that if I were to be at the beginning of the clip, the scaling is lower than if I were to be near the end of the clip where now the scaling is higher. So what we need to do in this case is to add something else to it. So that's what this is doing here where we're adding that geometric control. So let's start from scratch. Let's take this image that we have here and let's drag another copy of this onto the timeline. I'll just put it way over here so that we can separate, keep it separate and we can work with it. Now over here, this is a big image here. I'm working here for this video as a 1080 and this was shot on a 24 megapixel camera. So here what I would do is right click on there and first say set the frame size. So at least I get it to start fitting. Then I'd go up to effects controls and then I would set its scale to where it's going to then fit within the frame. So I'll change some of the Y dimension here and now that looks pretty good. Okay, so far so good. Now to animate this, we would go to the beginning and then the end and add some of those animation features like I show in the videography course. But here it's going to be a little bit different. First, let's go to the beginning of the clip by doing shift home. Now I'm at the beginning of that clip. The playhead is right there. And just like before, I can see that I can animate the position and also the scaling of it if I were to go to the end of the clip. But to get the geometric control, what we wanna use is an effect and it's called corner pin. It's something that I also show in the videography course for when you need to do some type of distortion corrections when things weren't quite level. Anyways, let's go over here to then our effects window and in here, then you would search for corner pin and you can see it came up right here. Take corner pin and drag that onto your clip, the one that you're going to work with. So now that we've got that on this clip right here, we can see 
in the effect controls window that it added corner pin. Now what we're gonna do here is animate it with the little stopwatches here. But the important aspects of this are going to be everything in the second column. And there's a simple formula to use for this, and that's plus, minus, minus, plus. And what that means is for most panning that we're going to do, we're gonna distort this by adding to this, then subtracting from this, subtracting from this, and then adding to this. I'll show you what that means. First, let's do the animation. At the beginning of the clip, remember we pressed shift home to get to the playhead to the beginning, we're going to start our animation. So I'm gonna click each one of those little stopwatches. Now we've got an animation in progress. Now I'm gonna go to the end of the clip, so I'll just do shift end. Now it's here that I will finish off the animation. And that's where I'm gonna be applying the plus, minus, minus, plus. And I'm gonna use 300 to do this. Now you can play around with it the lower the number, then the less distortion you're gonna have for this type of panning effect. And then of course, the higher the number, the greater the panning effect will be. So using our plus, minus, minus, plus, I'll go up here and I'll type in 300. That's gonna be positive 300. When I go to this value, it'll be negative 300. Then I also need to do a minus here on 3990, which taking 300 from that would be 3690. And then here where I need to add, it would be adding 300 to 3990, which would be 4290. Okay, so now I have this value input. Now, if I were to go back to the home, if I press shift home, I can see this is where the animation will start. And if I go shift end, this is where the animation will end. You can see that what it's doing is it's adding a little bit of a geometry shift to it. If you wanna see what this looks like in real time, you can move the playhead, but a better way to do this, because this is gonna be very intensive for rendering, is to first just render this clip and take a look at it. The way that I like to do that is go to the beginning of the clip and then up here, click this little brace. Go to the end of the clip by clicking shift end and press the closing brace. Then you want to be able to play this right here. It's called loop back. If you don't see loop back in here, then what you can do is go to your little plus button thing down here that controls what icons are there. You'd find it here and then just drag it down here on your toolbar. I'll just hit cancel. Okay, so now that we have that selected, what we can do now is render just this segment and it'll keep playing so we can see it in really good quality. So what you do is you go up to sequence and then render in to out. And what that will do then is render just where we've marked the in and out with those braces. Now this can take a while to do because it's rendering as though it were creating the video itself. But once it's done with that rendering, it'll start playing. You can see now it'll play over and over again. We have this now looking like it's doing a pan. And that's fine, but remember that we were also zooming in. So let's just stop that. I hit the space bar, by the way, instead of just going up here. But let's go now to the beginning. We'd like, for instance, how that effect of panning is working, but we'll add the rest of it in. What we wanna do is add our scale and position. So at the beginning of the clip, we'll animate position and we'll animate scale. Now we'll press shift end to see where we are and we'll add just a little bit of scale, a little bit of zooming to it. And then we'll use this over here. You can just hover over this uh, X value and then drag with your mouse and we'll drag it over so it's right about there. Okay, now we can do that render again and see how that plays. Once again, you could just hit the playhead, but to see it in better quality, I do like to go to that sequence, render in and out. Let it go ahead and render those, and then we'll see how that's playing back. So now that that's done, we can see all of the animation that's been applied, not just by corner pin to give our panning effect, but also position and scale. So this is better than just zooming in and moving around an image. Now, it's not quite as realistic as if we were to do a video, nothing really can be, but this adds a little bit more impact, but moreover, it's how you add it to the video. So let's take a look at that next.
So here's the video that I did for the client. You can see there's a lot of different clips. The backyard wasn't bad. It had a nice orange tree I, I went ahead and spun around on. But what I like to do is when I get to doing this clip, which here it is here, you can see where I finally did that motion. I do like to first show what the room looks like. So you have some realism, but then after you start playing that, then it's going to fade into then our motion, our animation. And I've done that also then, I just did the other view of the room, but then here, notice with this, this is where I'm gonna do the same type of transition where I show, yes, this is an empty property, but then I can just fade in. This particular image really didn't need that pan. You don't need to use this all the time. And the reason being is that I was basically just walking into the room, not doing a whole lot of panning. So it really just looked better just by doing the standard animation of zoom and position. So without doing corner pin. So using these particular segments of this empty room, this is what it looked like. But the key to this is twofold. One, this shows your customer that you can do something more than just take a video of a completely empty property, which would be really rather boring. What you're able to do is two things. One, you're able to upsell them on doing some virtual staging. So yes, you did some really good photography, you did some virtual staging, that's an upsell opportunity on its own. But then when you can show that you can add some of this with good realistic motion in the videos, that's yet another upsell opportunity that you can add to your client. And the key to this, the missing piece, was using that corner pin. And once again, that formula, plus, minus, minus, plus, if you want to pan the other direction, just invert it to minus, plus, plus, minus.